We've talked a lot about abusive work conditions in the game industry this year. In particular, we have talked about crunch, a period during the development of a game in which workers are expected to spend incredibly long hours, unreasonably long hours, at the office, completely skew their work-life balance, and in some cases, run themselves ragged to the point where they have a complete mental breakdown. Bioware, NetherRealm Studios, and Epic Games have each come under fire for stories relating to their work practices. A lot of dirty laundry is coming out to wear, which is pretty damn good, I think. It's about time that all of this abuse got exposed. But today, we're going to talk about something a little more positive on this note. We're going to talk about Nintendo, which has discussed the crunch situation as it pertains to their own company. Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser, not that one, has stated that because Nintendo's got its whole mantra of putting smiles on people's faces, they must keep their employees happy as well as their customers so that everyone can have that smile. The crunch point is an interesting one, said Bowser. Not that one. For us, one of our key tenets is that we bring smiles to people's faces, and we talk about that all the time. It's our vision, or our mission, I should say. For us, that applies to our own employees. We need to make sure that our employees have a good work-life balance. In its E3 Nintendo Direct, Nintendo revealed that Animal Crossing would be delayed to next year, now having a release date of March 20th, 2020. Bowser suggested that part of the reason for the delay is so that they could take their time rather than crunch to get the game ready. One of those examples is we will not bring a game to market before it's ready. We just talked about one example in Animal Crossing's delay. It's really important that we have that balance in our world. It's actually something we're proud of. I have an interesting relationship with Animal Crossing myself, but I always look forward to the new one. Ones. Mostly because it's the ultimate power fantasy. No, you're not running around with a sword, you're not slinging magical spells about the place. You just wake up in the morning, have no real problems, and can pay off your mortgage with fruit. And let me tell you, in this world as an adult, that is the most powerful fantasy you could ever fucking have. No problems! Pick fruit! Go fishing! The most pressing thing to worry about is being late to watch a dog play an acoustic guitar. And I can't argue with a game world in which that is one of the biggest concerns. I mean, I always obsessively play them for a few weeks until I hit a point where I just think to myself, what the fuck am I doing with my life? And then I have to stop. But those few weeks are a delight nonetheless. And with the Switch becoming possibly my favourite game system ever, I was really looking forward to having an Animal Crossing on it this year. So the news of the delay did disappoint me. It surprisingly disappointed me, like more than a, a game delay normally does. Which is weird because I'm not the biggest fan of Animal Crossing, I just like it. I guess I just really, really, really do need that escape from the way the real world works. In any case, as I've said before, no video game is worth the human cost of abusive crunch. And if the delay means that people can work on Animal Crossing at their own leisure, then that's absolutely fine. That's brilliant. More of that, please. I would gladly take any game later than usual if people aren't fucking killing themselves, aren't harming themselves mentally and physically to get it done. Of course, this is the president of Nintendo of America saying it. So we would have to see what actual workers say about their working conditions, but everything we've heard about Nintendo up to now has suggested that they do run a pretty decent ship over there. This is the company that, after all, saw its CEO take a salary cut not once, but twice when they weren't doing so hot, avoiding the mass layoffs that other publishers merrily employ, regardless of whether they're doing well or not, just to eke out a few extra bucks for themselves. Nintendo is an unconventional company in the game industry, which is great because it allows them to do things that are more customer-focused and more employee-focused, but it's certainly a ringing indictment on the game industry overall that the unconventional nature of Nintendo includes treating people with god damn and respect. Nintendo's executives take pay cuts rather than initiate layoffs. Nintendo delays games rather than rush out unfinished live services. And at least according to Bowser Not That One, Nintendo gives enough of a damn about its employees that it is not imposing crunch on them. And really, none of those things should be the hallmarks of an unconventional company. 
That should be standard, but it's not. In the game industry, that all makes Nintendo weird. In many industries, unfortunately, that would make Nintendo weird. But that's Katriple Capitalism for you, where things that should be abhorrent, things that should be bizarre, things that should be downright strange are simply normal, acceptable, to the point where a lot of people consider it so banal, they roll their eyes when you try and point out that, hey, maybe we shouldn't initiate mass layoffs to celebrate record revenue. Maybe we shouldn't coerce employees to work themselves into nervous breakdowns. At the very least, Nintendo does better at avoiding their fans throwing straight when there are delays. Yes, there are people that get annoyed about it. Yes, there are people that demand the games get rushed. But the company's usually very good at just very openly, humbly, honestly announcing that their games are being delayed. And for the most part, people accept them, which is good. I think that's helped by the fact that Nintendo's track record with game development speaks for itself. They're almost always of a high quality, even if I rate the occasional one a 7 out of 10. Nintendo takes its time to bake its games properly and deliver feature complete experiences and I can't argue with that. Unfortunately, the news has not been terrific for Nintendo's stock. Shares of the company dropped down 3.53% following news of Animal Crossing's delay. Which is part and parcel of what I've been talking about when it comes to how normal so much bullshit in the game industry is supposed to be, even though to any reasonable person, it should all be aberrant. I mean, if this is the kind of negative reinforcement that occurs when it's announced a game is being delayed so that a quality product can be made and workers are not pushed to their limits, there really is no incentive for less scrupulous companies to treat anybody well. Because investors expected Animal Crossing New Horizons to help shift sales of the Nintendo Switch, news of the delay has caused them to be disappointed and for the shares to drop. Which is an attitude that heavily contributes to the issues of games being rushed workers being pushed too hard, unfinished products being sold as completed releases. The system is fucked, folks. The system's fucked. But if you'd rather we end on some positive Nintendo news, I've got your back. We talked a while ago about how Nintendo was doing another bizarre thing with its online, making it so that Super Mario Maker 2 only lets you play online with randoms. You can't play with your friends. Well, they have reversed that decision. There will now be an update to the game post-launch that allows friends to play with each other. Nintendo's original reasoning for blocking play between friends was weird echoing the baffling reasons for them making cloud saves on the Switch Online unavailable for certain titles. They were worried that online play between friends could negatively impact online leaderboards, that they could screw with the rankings. And it never seemed to occur to them that they could just make friends play unranked. So that's some good news coming out of this E3. We've got Animal Crossing delayed, but for some good reasons. We've got Nintendo at least seeming to take Crunch very seriously and you'll be able to play Super Mario Maker 2 online with your pals. Not bad. Not bad. I'll take it.